on the back of a scooter for the first time. He drives me to the police station. They spend about 10 minutes outside the police station having a cigarette, trying to get me to convince that I'd spent the night with a ladyboy and that she'd stolen all my money, <laughs> which is... I have a cool day ahead. I'm just on my way to meet Rob now. We're gonna go grab some lunch together. Then this afternoon, I'm catching up with Dan. We're gonna have a beer. We'll probably exchange some war stories throughout the day. It should be a lot of fun. So let's go. Off for lunch now. I got a cool idea for a place to go eat. Do you remember we went to that university and we we're looking in the food court? We we're like not sure if we could go in yeah, there or not. Like up here on the other yeah, side yeah, of the yeah. road and like big field and that. Yeah, yeah. Let's go try that. See if oh. we get kicked out or if we can get lunch. Definitely get kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So far so good, we haven't been kicked out. We just kind of walked straight past security. I don't know how this works, if we're allowed here or not. There's like a kid on a scooter over here. I feel like it's kind of a fair game. So, found a cool little Korean place, and the food here is so cheap, which is great. It smells amazing. Yeah. The Korean food's really expensive here, and this was really reasonable. I got a Dolsot bibimbap, which is like a, the pot's hot, and it's a bibimbap. Delicious. So today we're just sitting around exchanging stories, talking about funny things that have happened to us throughout the past. You got a story you want to share? Yeah, it's uh, well, there's a few stories, but um, well, there's one that me and you the other day, wasn't it? Well, probably what last month, where uh, we, me and Adam, just uh, meet up as we do, like today, go and get some food and that, and uh, we're like looking for sort of places to film, you know, mm. just we, we always try and go down little alleyways and everything else. Just go, oh, what's down there? Because that's how we find absolutely everything. We're walking around the back of this 7-Eleven, and. Uh, I saw this like just staircase, spiral, spiral staircase. staircase. It just goes yeah. up, up, up the stairs, and I was like, well, "There's no one, no one stopping you. There's no signs. There's no like rail." We well, didn't know what was it. up there, right? No, like, it was I, like, is there I, a rooftop bar or yeah. something up there? So anyway, we, we made our way up these staircases, and I'm like, "What? Four, five? Yeah, four, fours. five stories. Yeah. No, we ended up like on the roof. There's no railing or nothing on the roof, and we're just uh, we're just looking around, like taking some pictures, getting like a different vantage point of the city, because that's the best thing to do is just to look around. And, uh, yeah, there was a cool view up there, but yeah. there was nothing up there. Yeah. No, we were still up there for I don't know what half an hour. Yeah, probably. We're just yeah. hanging out, right? Yeah. Just chatting, just, and... just chilling and looking around, and, and we spotted a few places down on the ground to, to go and have a look at as well. Uh, we're like, right, we'll go and make our way down and have a look around. So we go down, and I get right near the bottom, and I'm looking down, and I can see there's a policeman there. And about what was it? Was it three well, or four we, other guys? We were joking. We're like, oh, yeah. what if that cops for us? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. And then like, they all looked at us and they were like, right, they're there, like, because they didn't know where we were and they didn't want to come up looking for us. And we were just like, how did they know we were there? So anyway, these sort of official-looking guys come up to us and they're like, what are you doing? And we were like, uh, just looking around like we, we didn't break yeah. anything we were just looking around and there was no signs to say you couldn't go up the stairs weren't yeah. fenced off or anything it was Nothing. just like an inviting staircase um so anyway like the policeman stood there as well like he's got his gun he didn't say too much but you know when the, the guy's standing there with a gun and that he's just like okay well, there was just, like six <laughs> people at us right like, yeah yeah uh they get the got the other guys like all in like shirt and tie and you know looking sort of pretty official and they asked him to see like uh, our passports and id going you know what you're doing we sort of said oh you know just doing a bit of youtube and just just looking around and they, they searched adam's camera as well yeah, like, no, we want to see what, what you've taken 
footage of and we're just thinking like what's going on um at this point like, i was getting well a little bit worried oh, i was nervous scared. yeah i was yeah, nervous cause i thought because you could see the they were looking at each other as if to say what should we do with these guys you know yeah, should yeah. we have them arrested should we yeah it turns out that uh, the building next door to <laughs> us was was it an indian embassy an indian, yeah, indian, embassy, indian right? embassy so like obviously it was super official next door and there was actually signs for the road that we was on for taking no video or photos or anything so they we, thought we were like spies or something yeah right? they thought like, we were on the roof just trying to get some like spy footage and they must have been looking at us going what are they doing on the roof you know and um, looking in the window taking yeah. vid videos in the window yeah. of the embassy and i think i think the embassy has its own police car and everything as well always so out the front they were yeah, straight yeah. downstairs straight to the police when the police was probably like okay let's go and sort these guys out but uh yeah for, for a moment like we were both looking at each other i was like, nervous yeah oh, no yeah. like we we're in trouble as well because yeah there, there was a definitely a brown pants moment there <laughs> <laughs> So I just want to take a quick second to thank everyone that's been sending me in their stories. So for those of you that don't know, I'm putting together an ebook called Tales of Thailand and it's just basically anyone's stories, anything that you've had happen here, it can be fun, it can be crazy, it can be an exciting adventure that you've been on. I want to hear about it. So if you have something you want to share, send it to this email down here and I have a read of it. So far all the ones I've been getting have been fantastic and I'll probably put the majority of them in or just about all of them in the book actually. So if you do have any stories you want to share, send them through. Hey, good timing. What's up man? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> How are you? Yeah, good, good, good. <laughs> for a quick beer with Dan. Dan's got some stories. I don't know if he wants to share all of them on here, but. <laughs> Which ones are safe for YouTube? <laughs> yeah, don't get my channel shut down as yeah. well. <laughs> okay, my story is gonna be about the very first day, the very first time I was ever, ever in Thailand, in Asia actually. I've been on a long haul flight. My very first day, I knew nothing about Thailand. I landed in Bangkok and of course I headed straight to Khao San Road and I checked into a hostel called the Overstay. I've shown this before, it was less than a dollar a night and it looks like you're walking, it looks like the beach, like the old movie, the beach with Leonardo yeah, DiCaprio, yeah. like the bunk beds had no mattresses. The room I checked into had a red light bulb, no window, graffitis, a workout mat on the floor with a fan next to it. That was my room and it was full of the weirdest, craziest people you've ever, ever seen. This is my first experience of Thailand. That's what I thought all of Bangkok was like. So I fall asleep and I wake up in the middle of the night, somebody has walked into my room in full bondage gear. Actually, there were two people, it was a guy and a girl, and they looked at me and they said, what are you doing? I said, what are you doing in my room in bondage? And they have SMS parties, bondage parties, dominatrix inside this hostel. I was like, okay, not really my thing. Like, I'm gonna go out to Khao San Road. Got really drunk. At the end of the night, I spent like nearly all my money. I got in a taxi. All I knew that was my hostel was on Soy 40. There's more than one Soy 40 in Bangkok. So the taxi driver drives me to a Soy 40. I'm still drunk. I get out. I've spent all my money. I'm in a Cookie Monster t-shirt. I'm like 23 <laughs> years old, walking around. It's like five in the morning now. The sun's rising. All these Thai people looking at me like, who the hell is this guy walking down the back streets? No idea where I am. I find a police officer, tell him my problem. I get on the back of a scooter for the first time. He drives me to the police station. They spend about 10 minutes outside the police station having a cigarette, trying to get me to convince that I'd spent the night with a lady boy and that she'd stolen and all my money, which is not what happened by the way guys. I told them I just got in the taxi in the wrong, wrong place. The police then paid for me to get a cab back to my hostel where I then slept for like the next two days. It was horrific. That was my first ever day in Thailand, my first ever time. And that's what I thought all of Thailand was like. And after that, I came to Thailand every year for the next 15 years and now I live here. With, with his bondage gear. Yeah, yeah I always pack Can't a prepare. gag and whip now right, every time. The apple thing, what's that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't tell him I got that, man. <laughs> right. See you soon, man. Later, man. See ya. Send me your stories.